A nap is your plastic surgeon. Let's talk about it. Have you guys heard about this? Have you tried it? Have you seen it? So there are two apps. They're based in China called Soyoung and Gangmei. Please tell me I didn't pronounce that incorrectly. <laughs> the way they function is there's an algorithm. They're based off an algorithm and that algorithm is used to tell you what plastic surgeries you need based on a selfie. <laughs> I downloaded So Young last night just to try it myself out of curiosity and it's completely in Chinese. I did not pass go because I did not want to get myself entangled with the Chinese government and end up in somebody's Guatemalan concentration camps. <laughs> so let's <laughs> side joke that you may not find funny, but I find hella funny. But the idea is kind of fascinating, but mostly scary as shit. Excuse my language. WebMD and Google MD have changed the way that most people can and will practice medicine in, in this country, world, what have you. Increasingly, we are finding ourselves up against patients who are well-informed, but there are also patients who are misinformed. And so using that lack of knowledge to fight against what has been tried and true and proven scientifically. So that's already challenging in and of itself. I, as a plastic surgeon, don't have as much of that because most people still don't have a lot of clues about plastic surgery. And so there's still a lot of naivete around that and there's just, and, and then it's surgery, right? There's not a lot of mystery there in that way. You, and you have a cut, the surgery is done, and you end up with this proven result. I don't have that much experience with that part of it. I think probably have a lot more of an uphill battle when it comes to that. And I've al always said that AI may come and go well, it's coming, it's here. But it will never replace surgeons. It can never replace surgeons. And this may prove me wrong. AI is what it is, right? I think in surgery, it can be really helpful. I don't think it'll replace a surgeon, but I think it will enhance what we do. But this is dangerous. This is incredibly dangerous. And I don't know how else to stress how dangerous it is. TikTok came to the US from China. This is a bad joke. COVID came to the US from China. Okay. Um, it's not a joke, it's real. And there are so many things that China does that are amazing and wonderful and advanced, primarily in the technological realm. China's great for manufacturing. China, anyway, I don't wanna look Chinese pe people in government, don't come for me. I'm just a regular black person. <laughs> I come in peace. But this is dangerous because Imagine a machine, an, an app with no soul. Now here you may stop me and say, do plastic surgeons have souls? I don't, <laughs> and that's touche, <laughs> I don't know. Not all of us do, but I know a lot, a lot of plastic surgeons who do. And a lot of plastic surgeons who have limits and board certification is one of those tests of like, are you ethical, right? Do you practice ethically? I don't know if you know this, but maybe you don't. So a plastic surgeon, before they can become board certified, has to actually spend, I think it's nine months of their first year or two years of practice from July 1st to March 31st, the subsequent year, cataloging all the cases they've done in that time frame. And what they catalog is what the patient kind of looked like, so general characteristics about the patient, height, weight, those kinds of things, what surgery was done, and then what was the outcome. If there were complications from that surgery, that has to be cataloged and documented as well, and what was done with those complications. The plastic surgery board will collect this data from each and every person who wants to become a board certified plastic surgeon, they will look through the cases and they will decide which ones do they want the plastic surgeon to talk more about and describe in further detail. And so for those five to seven cases, the plastic surgeon then has to get pictures, get all the notes, 
all the documentation for that patient and give that to the board. Now, the board has the opportunity to actually say, you know what, your itch was so bad, we won't even let you sit down and speak with us. And right there you fail the exam and you cannot be board certified. The board could say, you did really well. Now let's make sure that you understand why you did really well and how you did really well. We want to understand your choices. Make sure they're ethical choices. Make sure they were your own choices. And depending on not only your results, but also the choices that you made for these particular patients, and they're supposed to be a representation of the choices, the kinds of choices you will make for all of your patients, they will determine, are you ethical? Are you safe? Are you knowledgeable? Are you skilled? If they agree that they, those four criteria are met, then you get board certified. This is after already demonstrated that you were knowledgeable to begin with because you took a written exam and passed that as well. Board certification is not just like a check mark. It's, it's legit, it's, it's legit, which is why I preach all the time, get a board certified surgeon or the equivalent in another country, if it's not the US. Check credentialing at the very least. If there's an argument about whether or not plastic surgeons have a soul, I would argue that the plastic surgeons who are board certified definitely have one, and those who aren't, I don't know. But imagine a machine looking at your face and saying, based on these random criteria, I think your chin is too long or too short or your nose is too flat or too wide or what have you. We already operate with a white woman standard as our standard in terms of beauty in this world. If you don't believe me, next time you see a black woman with a pointed nose who wasn't born with that nose, please tell me differently. That is the standard of beauty, as is. I'm not convinced that this algorithm will be so nuanced to not truly, truly, truly encourage people to do things that they really just don't need to do and should not do. We do not need to remove the soul, remove the ethical consideration from a plastic surgery consultation. We just don't need that. Yes, it's cool if you Google, I have these symptoms, am I sick? That's one thing completely. But to take a picture of your, of your face and then ask a machine, however, intelligent it may be. If you tell me it's AIE, artificial intelligence that's also ethical, then maybe I might like have a little bit more faith, but I have no faith. This is ridiculous. I don't know if I should encourage you to look at it. I think it's gonna come to the US. I think it's going to leave China and become a much broader thing that then we will also have to contend with in addition to the Instagrams, the TikToks, the Facebooks of the world, the Snapchats, and whatever else is coming next to replace what has been. Check it out. If you understand Chinese, please decode it for me. I'll check it out. I'll do the research and we can laugh together. Maybe cry together because I think this is, <laughs> I don't know how else to stress that this is actually really, really dangerous. What do you think? Did you check it out? Leave a comment and a question below. As always, love you lots and bye for now.